In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about protein turnover and protein degradation. Let us first talk about protein turnover. What is protein turnover? See, in our body there are various proteins and all of these proteins, they are constantly synthesized as well as continuously degraded. And by the balance of the synthesis and degradation, there is a constant maintenance of protein concentration in our body. So, this fine balance, it is called as a protein turnover. Now, let us look at the rate of protein turnover. See, if we consider all the proteins of the body as a all together, then rate of synthesis, rate of synthesis is roughly equal to the rate of degradation, degradation, right. And because of that, the constant concentration of protein is maintained. If we consider normal healthy adult, normal healthy adult, in the normal healthy adult and if we consider all protein together, this rate of protein turnover is approximately 300 to 400 grams per day. That means every day 300 to 400 gram of protein is synthesized and the same amount of protein is being degraded. Right? So, that both rate ma matches, so concentration of protein remain constant. However, for individual proteins, for individual proteins, this rate of protein turnover is quietly different. In our body, there are certain proteins which are long lived or you can say they have a high half life. This half life may be in the months or years. One example of such long lived protein is the collagen. This protein has a half life in years, right. On other side, some proteins in our body are there which are short lived, short lived. Their half life is within like hours to days and some proteins have even a half life of minutes also, okay. So examples of such short lived proteins are most regulatory proteins, most regulatory proteins they are short lived. Then most of the plasma proteins are also, most of the plasma proteins, they are also a short lived protein. And of course, misfolded proteins, misfolded proteins, they are also short lived. So now we understand the protein turnover. Now let's look at the protein degradation that how proteins are degraded in our body. So the next topic is protein degradation. In our body, there are two types of mechanism by which protein can be degraded. The first one is the lysosomal enzyme system, lysosomal enzyme system. And second one is the ubiquitin proteasome system, ubiquitin proteasome system. Let us first look at the lysosomal enzyme system. In the lysosomal enzyme system, what happens? The extracellular protein, they are taken up by the endocytosis and then this endocytic vesicle, it fuses with the lysosomes. In the lysosome, there is one particular enzyme that is acid hydrolase. Actually, it is a group of enzymes, so acid hydrolases are there which acts non-specifically on the protein and completely breaks down such protein and so amino acid gets released. Okay. Now, by the endocytosis, it takes up extracellular protein, but it this lysosomal enzyme system, it can also digest intracellular protein also. So, if they digest extracellular protein, we can call it as a heterophagy. Whereas, if it digests intracellular protein, intracellular protein, then we can call it as a autophagy. So, as we can see that in this first lysosomal enzyme system, it is non-specific, there is no any specificity, right. Second thing, it is not energy requiring. So, ATPs are not required in this process. So, this is basically a very crude process. 
and the on the opposite side this second system of protein degradation that is ubiquitin proteasome system it is one of the very sophisticated system for the protein degradation so now let's look at this second system of protein degradation that is ubiquitin which is often abbreviated as a ubiquitin ub for the ubiquitin so ubiquitin proteasome system in this ubiquitin proteasome system what happens suppose this is one protein on this protein somewhere inside this protein there is one lysine residue suppose this dark circle it represents lysine molecule and lysine amino acid it has a epsilon amino group so what happens in this there are some small globular proteins are there these proteins they are called as a ubiquitins so suppose this circle this red circle they represents ubiquitin so this is ubiquitin what happens this ubiquitin they bind with this epsilon amino group of the lysine and this protein is the target protein or you can say cytosolic protein which is undergoing this is cytosolic protein which is undergoing protein degradation by this ub uh, ubiquitin proteasome system so this epsilon amino group it binds with this ubiquitin and so this protein this is lys uh, lysine with this this first ubiquitin molecule binds now this binding it requires atp so here energy is used atp comes and hydrolyzes to adenosine monophosphate and one pyrophosphate molecule is released so here two high energy bonds are utilized now this is also enzyme mediated here enzyme is required this enzyme which is required is actually a very large complex of enzyme which is collectively called as a ubiquitin enzyme system it is majorly three enzymes which are labeled with e1 e2 and e3 this e1 what it does it activates this ubiquitin so e1 activates ubiquitin then e2 what does it do e2 causes conjugation of ubiquitin and then once these ubiquitins they are activated and conjugated then e3 comes into the action and e3 will causes ligation of this ubiquitin with this epsilon amino group so it it has a activity of the ligase now as i told you that this enzyme is actually a complex it is a collection of multiple enzyme so here all e1 e2 and e3 there are multiple copies multiple copies are there in the single enzyme complex and it is noted that e3 has a maximum number of copies its copies are more than this e1 and e2 copies now as you can see that here this is the lysine and this is the ubiquitin this is not peptide bond why because it is a epsilon amino group which is participating in this bond formation so this bond it is isopeptide bond it is isopeptide bond and then later on with this ubiquitin more ubiquitin molecules binds tandemly so once four or more ubiquitin four or more ubiquitins are bound with this targeted protein we can say that now this protein has a poly ubiquitin chain remember minimum four ubiquitin molecule should be bound with the targeted protein then only we will call it as a poly ubiquitin chain and such protein we can call it as a ubiquitinated proteins so now we have a ubiquitinated protein now what happens to this ubiquitinated protein this ubiquitinated protein they are recognized by proteasome so they are recognized by proteasome proteasome is the second part of this ubiquitin proteasome system then what is proteasome proteasome is the large barrel shaped macromolecular complex so suppose this is large and barrel shaped macromolecular complex this ubiquitinated protein they get recognized by this proteasome this is the proteasome which is large barrel shaped macromolecular complex so what happens this protein now enters into the cavity of this proteasome and these are its ubiquitin 
chain in the core of this proteasome there is a proteolytic activity so what this proteasome will do on this polyubiquitinated protein it first causes unfolding of protein so there will be unfolding then this ubiquitin molecules will uh, were get released so it will be get deubiquitinated and then it will cut down this protein into smaller fragment okay so it cuts target protein so once this proteasome complex had acted upon this protein molecule then what will happen this polypeptide chain will now be broken into pieces so now we have instead of one large protein we have a fragment of protein and meanwhile ubiquitin molecules this ubiquitin molecule they are released okay so all ubiquitin molecules are released and they will be recycled at this place now once this fragment of polypeptides are formed by the proteasome this will be again released from the proteasome and they come into the cytosol in the cytosol there are various non specific proteases this non specific proteases they will act on this small small peptides and it will completely hydrolyze all the peptide bond and so now we will have uh, all the free amino acids so at the end we get amino acids and these amino acids can be contributed to the amino acid pool now this ubiquitin proteasome system it is quite specific and we also know that different proteins like we had seen that long lived protein short lived protein they have a different half life so this different half life it suggests that degradation of protein is not random process rather it is very systematic one so that means that means if degradation is not random then there must be certain degradation signal degradation signals which signals that now this protein needs to get broken down right so these are that we are getting indirect evidence but degradation signals they are not fully understood however some part of degradation signals they are well understood one is the paste sequence rich protein paste sequence rich proteins in some protein they have they are rich in the paste sequence now this paste it is made up of uh, it, this word is made up of one letter code of the amino acid where p stands for the proline then e stands for glutamate glutamate then a stands for serine and t stands for threonine so whenever some protein contain this four amino acid in this sequence only and such a sequence are repeated several time in that particular protein we can say that such proteins are paste sequence rich protein and it has been observed that such proteins they are rapidly degraded rapidly degraded now at currently we don't know that what this paste sequence will lead to sequence of event which leads to rapid degradation that we don't know but what we know that such proteins are rapidly degraded and so they have a short half life so this is one of the degradation signal the second well understood signal is the n terminal residue n terminal residues or it can also called as a n and rule in this type of uh, this uh, degradation signal it has been observed that whenever on the n terminal side of protein whenever this arginine or acetylated alanine is there then such protein they have a shorter half life that means they are rapidly degraded now again we don't know what this arginine or acetylated alanine will do at the n terminal residue which leads to less half life but this is just an observation so we can have an idea that this might be participating in some type of degradation signal and if on the n terminal side there is a serine amino acid residue then such protein has a high half life so i hope that everything is clear and with this i complete this protein turnover and protein degradation thank you